Well, all right, this is Bishop Pelt, and we are thankful for you joining us. And we just need to, there we are, there we go. All right, we had a little delay there. Thank you guys for being so patient with us today. Uh, one of the things we're noticing is that with all that's going on, sometimes the internet is a little delayed, but we are thankful that you're on with us on another Teaching Tuesday. As you know, this is just something that we've done to keep us up to date in contact with one another. Um, and I'm so honored to be able to do that. Listen, just a few things to remind you. Please like and share and know that this, even this one that we're doing today uh, is on YouTube as well as Facebook Live. And so those of you who are watching us on Facebook, uh, if you have comments and uh, things of that nature, we really do appreciate you sending those comments in and we will do our best to answer to the best of our ability all of the questions or inquiries that we receive. As you know, we are... Uh, moving swiftly through this month. This is the last month of August. Can you believe that? And we're moving into our fall months and we're looking forward to what the Lord is going to do through and with us uh, as we move through. We're praying for all of our students who are in school, whether they're in kindergarten or college. We're praying for every one of you that the Lord would grace you and bless you. Uh, we're praying for our teachers. We're praying for nurses and doctors who are dealing with the uh, the stuff that's going on and we just want you to know how much we are praying for doctors and nurses, excuse me, as they minister and serve the community. Many of you have seen some of my requests today was, Lord, just do a miracle. We have a few ministers who are battling COVID, but we have a couple of family members in the Church of God, Florida, Coco family who are battling COVID. And we're asking the Lord just touch their body. So I want you to just join with me for a quick word of prayer. And then we will bring our guests on. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your abiding love and your ever care. We ask you now, God, that you would go up and down this state, all around this world. Bless those who are battling COVID. Bless those who are in the throes of the battle for their life. We say, God, be merciful. Be a healer as you are. And grant them, oh God, health. I pray now for doctors and nurses, oh God, you would touch them and give them insight and wisdom like never before, oh God. We lift them up, oh God. And Father, while we're in this time of praying, we're praying for those in Louisiana, those who've been affected by the hurricane, oh God. We say, God, will you continue to be the God of grace and peace? Will you truly let them know, God, as ministries will be coming to that area, oh God, to serve them? I pray, God, you let them know they're not alone, that you have not forsaken them, oh God. We pray for those in Afghanistan, oh God, those soldiers who have left, oh God, and they're Americans who are still there, we lift up that region of the world and we say, God, will you be a protector and provider even in that place where it seems like perilous times are there? And then we lift up those in Haiti, oh God. We lift up Pastor Kent Shaw, God, Bishop Kent Shaw, as he prepares to go to Haiti, oh God. Watch over him, God, and let his time of ministry be fruitful, oh God. We know, God, that you're the God of everywhere. You're the God who can move anywhere. So, God, we pray, God, even though we can't go, we say, God, will you go before and use them for your glory and your honor? It is your servant's prayer. Amen. Listen, I want you to be praying for those regions, as I just stated, the hurricane in Louisiana and that region, Mississippi Delta area. I want you to be praying for them, even to the tip of Florida. Haiti, as Bishop Shaw is getting ready to go down to Haiti, um, even this weekend. And then we also want you to be lifting up um, the wonderful people in Afghanistan. As you see on the screen, this is our Haiti's earthquake response. Bishop Shaw will be going, and if you are interested in going, uh, or at least sending some items, you can do it through a couple of ways. You can do it through Zelle, through his cash app. You can call us here at the state office today, and we will take those funds. But as well, you can send that to um, the international office. It does have a world missions number. If you just put that back up one more time, just put that up one more time. It does have a world missions number. And so if your church is interested, that world mission number is 102. 9534, and you can receive credit for your giving at World Missions. Again, we thank you for that. Let's want to remind you that because of COVID, a lot of stuff will be virtual. We just come out of our virtual seniors conference, but in the month of September, we have our virtual girls retreat, and we're looking for you to be a part of that virtual girls retreat on the 18th of September. So save the date. Uh, Lady Mary and Gowdy and the girls ministry uh, we're working on that, and Lady Pelt will definitely be a part of that. She would love for you to be a part of it, and I would love for you to be a part of that. 
We understand that because of all that's going on, we are limited in some of our group gatherings, but we're looking forward to us being together virtually. And this generation, you know, listen, it's second nature for them to be on the computer like this. So we are looking forward to a great time with them as well. Men, 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 listen, we knew we had to cancel the seniors conference, but we're going to do our very best to still hold our life builders conference. Um, and that's the first and second of October. Bishop Vincent Polk, who we're praying for, uh, lost a brother. Uh, he'll be funeralizing him this weekend, but we are praying for uh, you to join us, fellas. Fellas, let's get together. And if it's just two or three of us and a pack of hot dogs and, and Jesus, we're going to be all right. But we do want to get together this October. And then we are still hoping to have our state youth convention. As you know, it is always the weekend following Thanksgiving. Uh, we are analyzing that even as we speak. And we will probably give out a little more information a little later on as it relates to that. So please continue to work with us as we are working through all of these great, great things. Last but not least, we want to uh, remind you that as we are uh, moving forward into this year, these are ministry moment opportunities. And this is where I will segue to our guest today. We have a great guest today, a great friend of mine. I've known him literally. Uh, true. It's easily been over 30 years now, most at least been right at 30. But he's a great friend, former youth director, great pastor. One of the first guys to ever invite me to do a youth camp in the state. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to some and present to others, Bishop Chuck Noel. Chuck, are you there? Hopefully we'll get you in. Amen. We're just getting them in. Well, we got a little technical difficulty with Chuck. We'll come in when he gets in. We'll be in. Uh, but as you know, we spent last week talking about church revitalization and health. And I want to just stop for a moment and remind us uh, that in this season, we want to be healthy churches. We want to be churches that, that strive to be healthy so that we can evangelize, which is our great commission obligation to go into all the world. We want to be healthy churches so we can be community engaged. I still believe that the church is a conduit of community development. And I'm challenging us as churches uh, that we would continue to do not only the Great Commission, but make sure we have community connections. Uh, as it has been uh, shown, especially in our community, that there are many who uh, may be nervous of services or different things. And as a result of that, they look to the church. They look to our guidance to help them. Uh, with these items of corrections. So I'm asking you to continue to be engaged in your community. I've asked every church to uh, be involved with a, a school, to adopt a school. And I'm asking you again to adopt your school close to you. Everybody should have a school close to them. And if you do, you should take the time to uh, call them, be involved with what they're doing, ask them, say, hey, what are you doing at the school? What do we need? What do you need help with? Uh, sand sanitizers and tissues and things of that nature, people are still looking for those things and we're looking forward to being a blessing to our local schools, teachers, uh, we're looking forward to them as well. So we're asking you, please be involved and then as well, and as well, um, let me see if I do one other thing, here we go. Okay. Sorry about this, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right, we had a little, brother Chuck a little difficulty. All right, so we want you to be engaged in your community. And again, during this season, there are a lot of things you can be engaged with. I realize because people say, well, Bishop, there's COVID going on. And I, and I understand that. But I've noticed something uh, this past week, just in my local area. Saturday was football day, and everybody was there. There were people all over the football field. So COVID is not stopping people from coming together. Um, I think we just have to be committed to saying, listen, we will maximize our time of coming together. I'm not telling anyone to be careless. Uh, but I'm telling us to be about the Father's business. And we can still be about the Father's business by going among the hedges and highways, 
Um, I saw that as a great opportunity. Hold on just one second here. So there we go. We're gonna put it, we're gonna put them on another uh yeah, we got we got Chuck on a, on another little situation here. But we are asking you. Uh, I, you know, I, I saw something I want to give a little shout out to just a couple of people who have been really ministering very hard during this season that I've seen online. Um, one is doing things where people need the service. A lot of people still don't think about it, but a lot of people still have to go to a laundromat to wash their clothes. We should be going to these laundromats and doing what we call loads of love. Take some soap, take some quarters and minister to the people and say, listen, this loads on us. Um, whether you like it or not, gas prices are going up and everybody's not in the same place. Uh, but we need to uh, call and maybe go and talk to a gas station and say, listen, we'll, we'll pay for at least $5 of gas for people, $10 of gas, uh, and, and do a, a gospel gas day. When you go to a gas station and say, listen, we're going to pass out some tracks, we're going to give out some gas. And I hear people always say, well, Bishop, people are just, people are just uh, uh, get the stuff and then walk away. Listen, one of the things that our job is to make sure people know, people may not always uh, follow us. Uh, people may not always uh, continue to stay connected to us in some regard, but we should make sure they hear the gospel message. And that is critical. Hold on just one second. Let me do one thing to help Brother Chuck here. Hold on just a second. Give me one second, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so, I'm so Chuck is having a little difficulties, but we are working through it. And we still say this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. These things happen to us sometimes. And so when he gets in, we'll jump in. But again, I was sharing with you. I know that many times people get nervous about evangelism and assume, and people do. There are people who are fishing loaves, folks. There are people who only come for what you give to them. But I'm challenging you. Never let the response of those who receive stop you from being a willing uh, reservoir. We need to continue to tell people about the good news of the Lord. We need to continue to have contact with them. We need to continue to, to share the goodness of the Lord with folks. And as we do, uh, and as we do, I believe God turns that around. Some water, some plant, but God gives the increase. And my, my old objective is to make sure people know that God is real. And again, they may use us as some people feel they may um take advantage of us as some feel uh, but i would tell you something that if we have the mind of christ we see people getting the gospel not as one taking advantage of us it's us taking advantage of god's opportunity to share with them and so i challenge you loads of love maybe doing a time of a gas giveaway um if there's a Starbucks close to you. People like Starbucks, like Dunkin' Donuts, like 7-Eleven. I love coffee all across the board. So go in, go in, buy some coffee for some folks. Spend some time just getting to know people. And I'm going to just be upfront with you. A lot of times when people get to know that we who are saved are sane and not spooky, they want to see about the God we serve. They're not upset about what we teach. Matter of fact, I find that people kind of like the fact that we have a doctrine that we hold firm to. And that we believe it. They just didn't know if we were cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And so one of the things we have to do is take advantage of the opportunity that God has given us in our communities to, to reach them. Again, everybody's playing football right now. Down in South Florida, that's a big deal. And I told my wife, I said, I'm trying to find a way to make sure that we make an impact uh, in our area. It is a, a big deal. And so if they're playing football and trying to play football and making it to a football game, I'm going to do my best to take advantage of that football game uh, and, and tell them of the goodness of the Lord. 
And again, I believe that as we do that, God will open up doors. As we are doing these things, what should we be telling people? And here's the truth of the matter. I think one of the things we need to come and be persuaded with in our own mind is, first off, that Jesus is the answer, regardless of the question. And I think you have to be persuaded in your mind to that effect. I'm not trying to fall out with folks and fight with folks. Jesus is the leader and the guide of my life. And I tell people, if you follow Jesus, you will truly be able to have a great life because his principles apply to all life. Whether you be married, whether you be single, whether you be a parent with little kids, whether you be a parent with a teenager, whether you be a parent with an older child, his principles lead us to life. And one of the things that I think we struggle with sometimes is that we fail to realize uh, that we need to be clear about this message that we have for the Lord. And as we have this message and that Jesus is the center of that message, we have to tell people that they are sinners. They've broken the will of God. They've broken the law of God. They've broken the word of God. And God has made it possible for them to be reconciled through his son, Jesus Christ. Again, that is a tough thing for people to understand, but that is what we have to teach. That's what we have to believe. And then we must lead them to understand all they need to do is repent. Repent means to turn, come back to the Lord. And if they do those things, he will receive them. Now in that, we will then have to teach them how to be, to live a sanctified life. And I heard one, one, one person told me, said, listen, we want them to enjoy Jesus. The more they learn to enjoy Jesus, they'll stop enjoying this world. And I promise you, they'll realize that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to them. Listen, I think Brother Chuck is on. So let's bring him on in. Brother Chuck, come on in, Chief. Hello, get, sir. Get that in. Tell me something good, man. Listen, I'm living the salt life, brother. Listen. And it's, it's, it's a good thing. Ah, listen, folks, this is my good, good, good friend. Dr. Chuck Noel, we are fellow <laughs> youth directors together. And I was telling them, Chuck, you were the first guy I think he would invite me. I think I came to your Northern Ohio youth camp. That was the first youth camp. And I still remember that one little girl who just kind of was fixated on me that your wife had to come <laughs> save me from. I'm like, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked, every time I look around, she was like, good Lord, there she is right there. But uh, man, well, how you doing, Chief? I am doing great. Sharon was just practicing being one of the good mothers of the church. That's all she was doing. <laughs> she was just, she was just practicing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good, feeling relaxed, and I am honored to be on here with with you. Um, you've known me since I had black hair, brother. <laughs> well, so, you, you uh, know me since I had hair. So listen, <laughs> you, you got white hair. I'm a bald head man. So listen, we're in this together. <laughs> one, one, little, one little boy told me, he said, Bishop, you bald. Matter of fact, I'm bald. He said, you bald to the back of your head. So I'm, I'm bald to the back of my head. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not there yet, but it's it's all turning uh, white on me. But I I feel good. And hey, I'm excited about the kingdom of God and about what the Lord is doing. And uh, I believe, man, that the Lord is positioning us for one final push before the Lord returns for his church. And uh, <laughs> it's amazing that you and I could have been born at any time in history, but God chose to bring us into the kingdom for this day and this time. And I'm honored by that. And thank you for inviting me to be on with you here today. Man, it's good to see your face and uh, be able just to chat with you for a little while. Well, listen, man, you, you, are, you are one of my kingdom connections for life. Your wife, your children, your mom and dad uh, are near and dear to me. And, uh, you know, a lot of people still may not know who is, who is Chuck Noel. So kind of give us a little brief synopsis of who you are and what you're doing now. And then we'll, we'll segue into uh, some other conversation. Okay, well, um, I've been in the ministry for over 40 years, uh, was a pastor for many years, served as a state youth director for many years, uh, been a student pastor and Christian education director in a local church, uh, started my ministry as an evangelist when uh, I talked Sharon into marrying me 40 years ago. Uh, we hit the road. Uh, evangelizing, and that was a great experience uh, for us. And uh, we made a lot of good kingdom connections and friends along the way. And uh, now I'm I'm living in the Tampa area, 
And uh, I'm working for uh, Dr. Brian Cutshaw at the International School of the Word, doing some writing and some teaching. Uh, Sharon and I are also doing some missionary work, uh, particularly in the country of El Salvador. And uh, I'm doing some work uh, filling pulpits and uh, doing some coaching with younger pastors and all of those kind of things. So I've got I've got my fingers in a lot of different kingdom pies right now. Now, that's a good way to segue, because I think one of the things that I shared with you, I think even we were talking about church health and evangelization, but but I want to kind of come back to something. You are, to me, a model of something that we may need to be mindful of. You, you transition from a full-time pastorate to this. Can you kind of help? Maybe because I think one of the things we don't do, and I tribe especially, we don't transition real well. We don't, <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm gonna say this in defense. Your dad was another one who transitioned very well. Father, dad transitioned well. Uh, you know, talk to us about, especially even now with what you're doing in coaching, the significance of us being prepared for transition so that ministry can move and, and go for it, whether it be personally or the church? Well, Bishop, I, I appreciate that question because I believe the kingdom of God is um, set up uh, in times and seasons, that God has times and seasons for everything and, and everyone. And uh, you mentioned my dad. And by the way, my mom said to tell you she'll have chicken and dumplings ready when you're ready to come over. Tell her, tell her, uh, I'm, I'm, tell her I'll, be 70, I'll be hitting 75 coming right on up real soon. She ain't got to work. <laughs> um, I think the kingdom of God is characterized by times and seasons. And, um, you know, my dad uh, sensed that the season had come for him to transition, and he surrendered himself to that. My, my whole ministry has been one of seasons and assignments. And uh, wherever God assigned me, whether – it was as a state director, or it was at a pastor, as a pastor. During that time of assignment, I was passionate about what I was doing. But I also had to be sensitive to when that season changed. Uh, and here's a couple of things to remember about when that season changes. First of all, I'm not my own. I belong to him. And uh, there have been a couple of those seasons, to be honest, Bishop, that I felt like I was in the military more than I was in the ministry. Hmm. Uh, I felt like I'd been called to the commanding officer's office, and I stopped 12 <laughs> inches from the desk, stood at attention and saluted. And he said, hey, you did a good job in your last assignment, but I have a different assignment for you. Well, I I'm happy in this assignment. I'm content in this assignment. Yeah, but. I've got another assignment for you. Mm. Um, and so you have to be sensitive to when God is changing your assignment. The second thing I would say is the timing is everything. Mm. Um, this last change, I was pastoring a good church. We went there to revitalize uh, a church uh, that was struggling. Um, as you know, we were in St. Louis and we had about 4,000 members at the church out there. And and God assigned us to this church with 40 people. And uh, it was a revitalization project. And we watched God turn it around and resurrect that congregation and do some wonderful things. And uh, to be honest, I was content to stay there until retirement. I, I was happy to do that. But opportunities began to come to do some missions work, to work with my good friend, Brian Cutshaw. And um, I knew God wanted me to do it, but then COVID hit, and I knew that the timing was not right. So you can do the right thing at the wrong time mm. and still get in a mess. Uh, so be sensitive to a change of seasons. Uh, look for the right timing. We had to wait until the church was on uh, solid ground financially. The church was a solid ground spiritually. Uh, the church was winning new people and growing again. We had to wait until the church uh, was able to deal with a transition. I think um, one of the things that I have done, and maybe we often do, is we choose to leave in the middle of conflict. Hmm. 
and and sometimes that may be necessary. I know you as a bishop have had to deal with that a lot, but and sometimes it may be necessary. But if you can, hang in there and settle the conflict, settle whatever has to be settled, and then if you feel God's changing your season, then make a transition. And the third thing I would say is that it doesn't always make sense, um, man. My, my wife and I were both on salary at the church. We were making a good income. Uh, we had a, a beautiful home and everything was going great at the church. But the Lord said, this is the time. And uh, so sometimes it doesn't even make sense to other people. But if God's changing your season, I'll tell you something that my mama taught me. She taught me that the will of God is not always easy, but it's always safe. Hmm. And uh, if you'll make sure you stay in his will, he'll take care of you. That's good stuff. Listen, this is my great friend. He is a great leader, great teacher, uh, Dr. Chuck Noel. I promise you, he's now in Florida, folks. Listen, they, they, listen I always tell people, Cleveland may be the headquarters, but heaven really starts in Florida. Everybody trying to get to Florida, man. I don't care what anybody <laughs> say. You know, I, I, want, I want to come back to something, because one of the things you you – brought up was that you went to a church that needed revitalization. And I know one of the things you're probably having to deal with now post COVID um, is how do churches either revive, retain, return in this season as you are probably seeing, as you probably have to coach, uh, you know, in, in that regard. Well, I think church revitalization has taken on a little bit different look than it did almost 11 years ago uh, when I went to Columbus, Ohio. So uh, some things have changed because of the pandemic. So I think there's a couple things uh, to keep in mind. One, and I don't want to sound pessimistic, there are going to be some people that have used the pandemic as an exit ramp for whatever reason to leave church and they're not coming back. They're just not, they're not going to do it. So you have to think about how much time and effort you're going to put into people that are resistant to returning to church. Mm. I think the second thing to keep in mind in revitalizing a church after COVID is uh, that chances are you have built another congregation out there. You have built you have built an online congregation. Now, listen, I'm an old guy. I'm 60 years old. And there are some things that I can't figure out about online church. I haven't figured out how do I baptize people that only show up online. And, and water baptism is crucial. Jesus said to do it. It's crucial. How do I do that? Um, I never got very good at serving the Lord's Supper. <laughs> online. I just <laughs> felt like it's an activity of the body of Christ when they gather together. But here's the deal. It's here to stay. It's not going away, even if the pandemic does. Um, we built a whole online audience, even people in other countries, people that never darkened the door of a church, that now every Sunday we're hearing the gospel. We're praying with us. I had one gentleman that <laughs> sent us a message. He said, I got baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues while watching your broadcast today. So, you know, they're, they're out there. So keep that in mind. And I don't want to get too far afield, but there's a couple of ways you can deal with it. No, First listen, of all, listen, I want you, I, please know you ain't too off field because, because I will tell you, and the reason I bring this up to you because I do think, and one of the things I love about our relationship is we are friends who understand that we just we just come at stuff differently. And one of the yeah. things that, that you just brought up that kind of helps us is, first of all, our tribe in general is very communal. So we like to do stuff together. And it's kind of throwing everybody off that people don't want to really come together. So that's kind of, that's just, so that's kind of a tough thing. Then you put on top of that the, the, the culture that I'm in. You always come together. Family comes together. Right. Okay. Well, 
it is it is like a double whammy to us because you're like, wait a minute, you're not going to come. And then online, historically, my coach is late adapters. We don't – listen, we wouldn't go into – I'll never forget, I, I tell the story. I remember the first time I put a projector over my church, and they said, there he go. You know, turn it into a movie theater. There you go. <laughs> you know. <laughs> There he go. There he go. You know, they got it. It's a, it's a, it, it, it's a picture show. You know, yes, that's, that's just a, so now for us to have people going online, you know. Hello. Bishop, I don't know if you can hear me, but I lost I lost you. Bishop Pelt, you have exited the building. And from my screen, I'm on the show. But I don't know what happened to our leader. There, there he go. is. Uh, listen, you must got something more power, powerful to say today because we have had more problems today. But tell me something good again. All right. Well, he, he, here's the thing. I, I agree with you. And, and, uh, I come from, my parents come from an Appalachian culture and the Appalachian culture is that, uh, the church is a family. Not only does the family get together, but the church gets together as a family. And when you get saved, you don't miss church. You, you just, or your family is going to come down on you about, not being in church. So I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I think there are some things that we can view differently that we can think about differently. Um, and it, one of the hardest things in the world is not to change procedures at church. One of the hardest things in the world is to change culture, hmm. but, but we're, but we're being uh, forced. You talk about late adopters, for months, the young leaders in my church have been saying, Pastor, we got to get online. Pastor, we got to get our services online. And I kept telling them, look, you raise the money to put some NBC, ABC, CBS quality cameras in this sanctuary. Uh, and we do it studio quality. Then I'll let you put me online. But I'm not going online. I've seen some of this online stuff. Well, then COVID hit and we're doing it with... <laughs> We're doing it with a spotlight and an iPhone, <laughs> and we're and we're we're just trying to keep people connected. But here's one of the things to think about, and and one of the things that I had to start thinking about because it can get discouraging when you look out and and you're trying to have church and a third or half of your congregation is just not there. It's gone, and you wonder you've tried to call them, visit them, and you don't even know where they are. Uh, that can be discouraging, but but here's some things to think about. What if we thought about active attendance versus average attendance? Hmm. And and what I mean by that is, how many people are engaging with your congregation online, and and not just for ten seconds, but how many people are engaging with the service online? Hmm. Then if, you're, if you have electronic giving of some sort, people can go to your website or they can text to give, whatever the electronic giving is. As a pastor, pay attention to that. There may be someone that you haven't seen actually in church for a while, but are they still giving? That means that person is still connected to my church. Because what I found is if they're actually going to leave, their giving stops before their attendance does, right. their money walks away. So are they connecting that way? Maybe, and, and this is something, again, the young leaders in my church just, just got to me on because, uh, again, I can sometimes be a late adopter. Uh, they said, Pastor, we need digital discipleship. I said, you need to describe, I don't even understand the concept of digital discipleship. Well, they created one evening a week where one of the leaders in the church would go online and 
do a whole discipleship course. Maybe it was on stewardship or maybe it was on how I got saved or maybe it was on another topic, sanctification or whatever. And they said, look, we have to reach out and begin to disciple these people that are connecting with us uh, online. So as a pastor, I had to shift my thinking a little bit away just from average attendance to what is my active attendance? Are they connected in a small group? Are they connected in digital discipleship? Are they connected through our giving? Are they staying connected to the church? If they're staying connected to the church, then I have an opportunity to get them back in to the sanctuary uh, and get them back there. And then the, the, the best thing we can do is continue to do outreach and reach out to people and reach out to new people. We started, uh, we started parking lot church. We got us a little FM transmitter and, uh, you know, and we had signs that told people where to tune in. Well, even after we went back in our sanctuary, brother, there were people that came and said, we want you to keep broadcasting to the parking lot. We love this church. Uh, in fact, one family even came in and got baptized. But they said, Pastor, we'll be listening to the service in the parking lot every Sunday. And they didn't miss a Sunday. Um, and so that was another way we gained a whole new family by doing something like that. So the, you have to keep reaching out. And at some point, we want to go after the lost sheep. We want to go after those that wander. But at some point, I have to say, do I, am I going to put more energy into that? Or am I going to think about other people out there that are lost that need the Lord. Let's reach them. Uh, and um, we'll see grow through that. That's good stuff. And I appreciate you saying that. Cause I think one of the things that people are nervous about is they're assuming that, that you have to give up one for the other. And you, you're right. You got to right. continue to look for those who left, but our commission is to those who are lost. It is to those who are lost. And and let me let me even push you a little bit because I know you teach there at the school uh, with Dr. Uh, Cushaw. When you guys talk about outreach, are there not and, and to the to the Florida Coco family? That's why I'm always hounding you about sponsoring the school. To every church that's near college campus, you need to have some presence on that college campus. Uh, just uh, nothing else. They help you understand what's hip. I try to stay around college students because I don't. I don't know what's what's hip. I don't know what's cool. I don't, I don't know. And I need them around to kind of tell me. But at the same time, the community needs to see that the church is not the building. If anything, Corona has reminded us that we are a body that use a building, not a building looking for a body. And right. I, if you can expand that a little bit, because I know you're probably talking to people to kind of get them out of that mindset, maybe even going back to the, what we consider the first century church model. Well, just just a couple of examples of trying to be a first century church in the 21st century. Some things that uh, some things that we did um, going out into the community with teams, uh, particularly to the homes of of elderly people or disabled people and uh, saying, look, what can we do for you? Can we mow your grass? Can we rake your leaves? Can we, uh, you know, paint your gutters? Can we do something around your home? And all we ask in exchange is just let us put up a sign in your yard that tells a little something about our church. Uh, we took uh, we took uh, five thousand uh, dollars, and um, we bought five hundred ten dollar gift cards. Uh, uh, some to Walmart, some to Chick Fil A some to a local uh, like convenience store, gas station uh, place that were right around our church, right around our church. And we got permission uh, to from the managers of these places to go there on a day and just pass out $10 gift cards to people. And we attached to it information about our church, inviting them, inviting them, to come. Um, another successful outreach that we did is we partnered with other ministries. Now, look, 
you know me. I am, I'm a company man. I am church of God. I love the church of God. But I found out there's some good Christian people out there in my community that love God and they want to see people get saved. And so uh, there was one called Mommy's Matter that was a ministry to single pregnant mothers. Oftentimes we tell them, don't abort your baby. But who's going to help them when the baby's born? Man, we partnered with Mommy's Matter and provide diapers and wipes and high chairs and uh, help preparing a, a resume, help with transportation, help finding an apartment, baby food, formula. Um, they Each of those girls had a Christian mother in the faith that was assigned to them uh, that that walked with them through this process until that child was two years old. And, and so we were able to reach a lot of people, a lot of young women with the gospel, uh, through that. Uh, and there were other ministries uh, in our community that we partnered with. And sometimes they had a ministry that we didn't have, but we had a building where they could meet. I mean, just find out who's out there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. And if we're not concerned about who gets the credit, if it's kingdom connections and kingdom work, God will open lots of doors. Here, here's what I would tell my congregation. We need to think out of the box, just stay in the book. Mm -hmm. Think out of the box, just stay in the book. As long as we stay true to biblical values, um, then God can bless what we're doing when we think out of the box. And that's good stuff, Chuck. And I appreciate you again. I, I like that we stay out. We can miss. We got to get out the box. We'll stay in the book. Let me ask this question. I know you also working with uh, Dr. Kershaw. Matter of fact, one of the first seminars I did um, uh, when I became overseer here was to bring Dr. Kershaw in. And uh, I know he does the school of ministry there. Uh, kind of talk to us about that, and, and maybe some of the things you do specifically with the school uh, that that might be of interest to people on today. Oh, well, thank you for the opportunity to share that. I, I uh, appreciate your friendship, and I know that you believe in uh, what Dr. Cutshaw is doing, and I appreciate that partnership. Uh, International School of the Word, ISOW.org. Uh, there's a great website that you can go to, and it's an online learning platform. Uh, there are five or six different certificate programs that you can get in, uh, ministerial studies, biblical languages, uh, Hebrew roots. Uh, there's just, there's five or six different, uh, Bible prophecy is one of the most popular that people like to get into. And Dr. Cutshaw has brought some of the finest teachers uh, around the country, Dr. French Arrington, Perry Stone, Bill Cloud, uh, Dr. Michael Knight on Christian apologetics, some of the greatest teachers in the Pentecostal movement uh, to come in and uh, teach these various courses. The school has been in operation for three and a half years, Bishop. We have over 8,000 students in 72 countries. And um, it it is still uh, primarily a missions outreach uh, because we have committed in 2021, coming out of the pandemic, uh, Dr. Cutshaw felt strongly, and we have committed to scholarship 1,000 pastors in Africa uh, this year alone. Um, and of course, you don't get paid for that, you know. So you need students to sign up, and you need donors to to donate and help with that. Um, as our school goes to other countries, um, the the tuition is scaled based on where a person lives. If you live in India, you would only pay $2 for a course that a, a student in America would pay $100 for. So it, it, it not only is to learn about the Bible, to learn about ministry, but it's also a missions outreach uh, that God is opening doors and taking around the world. L let me just say this very quickly. If you really would like to be an ongoing student, with ISO, go to the website, ISO.org, ISOW.org, and click on ISO All Access. This is a subscription service 
for $99 a month, you can take as many classes as you choose. There's no limit. You have access to the entire learning platform. For the cost of taking one course, you can have unlimited courses at your fingertips each month. Um, at the end of each at the end of each class, uh, there is a quiz, and then at the end of each course, there is a final exam uh, that can take you towards uh, earning certificates, or you can just take the courses uh, because you like the subject matter and. And that's what you would love to do. But let me share this with you very quickly. If you go to ISO All Access, when you get ready to check out, type in ISOW30. ISOW30. That will give you a $30 discount on your first month. So it's going to more than pay for your first month. Uh, or it's not going to pay for the whole first month, but it is going to help pay for the first month. ISO 30, um, there is a place to type in a discount code and uh, that'll save you $30 for that first month and get you started and get you enrolled. Um, I believe in the mission of this school. We're training ministers across the globe, but not just ministers, lay people. A couple of weeks ago, um, I went to the school and we were teaching a course on Deuteronomy. Uh, somebody told me that's what they read when they have insomnia. Uh, we did a course on Deuteronomy and we did first and second Thessalonians. And uh, Bishop, we averaged over 700 students a day uh, from 14 different countries and 42 different states that logged in to watch uh, the live broadcast as we were recording it. Of course, before it goes on the platform, it'll go through about six or seven edits and all of that sort of thing. But um, we offered it for free if folks just wanted to log into the website uh, back then. But um, I, I love what I'm doing. And uh, also in El Salvador, we're helping with feeding programs. I'm scheduled to go down and do a crusade um, going down in November and we're setting up, uh, a medical clinic on an Island that has over 700 residents, but they have absolutely no medical care. Uh, and we're partnering with some other ministries to go down there and set up a medical clinic. So, I mean, we're just doing so much. God's opening so many doors and, uh, it's just nice to be with you here today. Man, I, I'm a I love it. Well, let me ask you, if they want to get hold to you and, and have you come minister to them, uh, on a, yes. on a, uh, how would they get hold of, to my good friend Chuck Noel? Um, I can give you my um, email address All right. uh, and my cell phone number if, you, if that would help. Well, this is what we'll do. You, uh, if you send it to us, we'll send it out. But if you want to. And listen, you know, now I don't know okay. if you want to get you may not want to get your cell phone number. I'd like me, I give mine out. Everybody oh. call me. Florida. Okay. Place in, Florida How about an email address? Yeah, 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 put your email down. That'll be good. Don't get me in trouble with my, my lady Sharon. Like, what the world? That pimp doing? I don't want you to yell at that. Uh, don't get me in no trouble. So <laughs> give, us, give, give us the email. <laughs> All right. It, it is my name, Chuck Noel, N-O-E-L, C-H-U-C-K-N-O-E-L, 1960 at gmail.com. Chuck Noel, 1960 at gmail.com. Listen, I would love to come and preach on a Sunday. Now, listen, you have a bishop that preaches the paint off the wall. And I, I, uh, the man came and did some preaching for me and did an amazing job. Um, but I, I love to preach the gospel, uh, would love to come and do some leadership training or any way that I can help your church and their leaders. Just contact me, and uh, we'll talk about coming and see if there's a way I can help. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a wonderful resource. He's a wonderful brother in the Lord, and we apologize for the technical difficulties we had. I'm going to have to figure out what's what's going on. You know, Teaching Tuesday, I believe, is making an impact, and the enemy is just going to make sure that we uh, have problems. But we Come are on. thankful. We are thankful that the Lord is allowing this. And I hope those of you who watched it will tell your friends, uh, to come back and watch this.
And I challenge every church, as you know, we're doing a couple of cohorts. Bishop Cabarrus is working on our revitalization cohort. Uh, young ministers, I'm doing calls with you. You're going to be hearing from Brother Chuck. You're going to be seeing Brother Chuck. I want you to get used to him, and I want you to utilize him now. I would love for you to give him a call. And he's in Tampa, so he's in the Tampa area. So to those of you on the West Coast, you get to use him up first, and we'll pull him to the East Coast. But we want to, we want to totally utilize him for the glory of God. Man of God, I want you to close. If you got any encouraging remarks you want to maybe share, and then just close us out with a word of prayer. I will, I will do that. And and let me just say to the folks watching, uh, you have an amazing leader, and uh, he is a leader that understands the culture that he ministers in, but he is a kingdom connection guy. He is a guy that believes in the kingdom of God over and above everything else. And he he's wise and he's anointed. And um, if he's your friend, he's your friend forever. And he's, he's been a friend to me. And uh, so listen, work with him, jump on board the things that he's doing um because his leadership is proven to be to be effective let me just pray with you before we go father in the name of the lord jesus christ i thank you for the opportunity today to sit with my friend and to talk about the kingdom and to talk about your church father i just pray blessing upon those that are watching and listening today i pray that the favor of god will surround them Lord, I pray that you would fill their hearts and their minds with creative ideas. Lord, I, I pray that they will think out of the box, but stay in the book. Always stay in the book. And Father, I pray that you would help us and link us together to reap the harvest. Lord, you have a revival that is coming to your church that is going to bring in a harvest of souls before you come back. Lord, to take us out of here. And Lord, I want to be a part of that. Bishop Pelt wants to be a part of that. And Lord, I believe all those that are taking time to listen today want to be a part of that. And so I just pray outpouring of the Holy Spirit, God, that will empower believers to do kingdom work and make kingdom connections in the cities where they serve. Lord, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, man, listen, man, I love you, man. I mean this, and I want you to tell mom and dad I'm coming over real soon. Tell your lovely wife we love it. I'm going to have you come to the House of Radiant, but I'm definitely going to have you come back. And uh, maybe let's do a, uh, uh, an expanded uh, Teaching Tuesday. One of the things we find is because it's in the daytime. Sometimes people don't get a chance to watch it, but I would love maybe to have you do a Teaching Tuesday one night and okay. have you do a session. And I believe it would be wonderfully best. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been blessed by this, let me know. And I promise you, we will get him in touch with you for your church and what God is calling you to do. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in very, very perilous times, but we still have a very powerful God. And no matter, the, no matter the chaos, we are still more than conquerors through him who loves us. So again, we love you to life. And as we always say, I'm praying for you. I thank you for praying for me. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. You are important to me and I need you to survive. And thank you for being with us on Teaching Tuesday. And thanks for keeping us Coco strong all day long. Love you. Everyone. I love you. Thanks, Jeff. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.